Good Friday right here at TV 47 on Morning Cafe with me, Fred Indimuli. Time now for the State of the Nation where we take a look at the big headlines. Of course, the biggest discussion is about the Deputy President and the looming impeachment. We'll be getting to that with my panelists this morning. Allow me to introduce them, uh, beginning with Kimani Mwangi, uh, governance expert. Karibu sana. Sante sana. Sante sana. Uh, next to uh, Mwangi, we have Jerry Kahiga. Uh, Jerry Kahiga is a national youth leader, political party, PNU. Karibu sana. It's been a while. We'll go happy. Impeachment. <laughs> <laughs> and Hans Rohr, political analyst, also joins us. Mm. It's good to have you guys in the studio for this discussion. Um, a lot of talking points, and I know we'll talk about the impeachment, but there's a story that may escape a lot of uh, people's attention. And uh, it's on uh, page 10 of the standard, where you talk about inside Chirar Gate Bill that seeks to increase presidential term limit. So the UDS senator. Samson Cheradge now wants the constitution changed so that the term of the president is extended from the current five to seven years. Uh, the senator um, has already tabled, and he did this yesterday, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2024, which also seeks the extension of all other elected representatives, among them governors, members of parliament, senators, and members of county assembly. So, kila muto ongezewe kwe saba mara moja. Uh, currently, the elected leaders only do five years. Now, while moving the bill, he said the bill seeks to amend Article 136 of the Constitution to increase the term of the office of the president from five to seven years and amend Articles 101, 177, and 180 of the Constitution to extend the terms of governors, senators, members of the National Assembly, and MCAs from five to seven years. Now, Kimani, we, this, this argument has always been there. Uh, on and off, on and off. Finally, he has tabled an uh, amendment motion uh, before uh, the Senate. This could be a game changer, if at all, uh, if we could go by the numbers we are seeing and how they're playing out right now with the newfound alliance between ODM and Kenya Kwanzaa. Um, we could actually see a uh, push towards this direction. Do you think it's just a distraction that probably we are paying too much attention to something that's uh, inconsequential? Uh, firstly, po politicians have a way of waiting until when our attention is drawn elsewhere for, for them to sneak in some funny laws that benefit them. And uh, this could be one of those instances. But again, it is also good to be fair to the system and ask, what informs the decision to increase the term? Th there has been argument that uh, in our electioneering period, which is five years, we spend the first, after forming the government, we spend the first one and a half year fighting on who won and who did not win. Firstly, we go through the legal process of petitioning the presidential win to the Supreme Court, a decision is made. Still after that, we sp uh, spill over to the streets through demonstrations and uh, after almost a whole year, then we come to some sort of consensus that we can share this thing uh, and peace uh, uh, reigns supreme. Th then shortly thereafter, two years into the government and one and a half year to elections, <coughs> we all hit the road campaigning. So there has been that argument that it takes us, that it takes us like two years or three years to serve the people. The rest is spent on campaigning or fighting. A lot of uh, economic dis uh, suffering uh, as well as uh, short time to serve the people. But, but then is the solution to increase the term? I increasing the term is accepting that this is who we are, we can change. So as a result of it then, let's create one year for fighting and one year uh, for campaigning and five years for serving the people. Essentially, this is what the politicians are telling us. Uh, politicians have a way of uh, avoiding the necessary tough work to so be basically done. Basically, it's a way of uh, trying to accommodate our bad manners. Because it is I've sanitizing our bad yes. manners. I, I've had, uh, in Jiri, I've had even suggestions that uh, if we get to a possibility of a referendum, uh, we should consider even uh, changing how the deputy president uh, 
position is appointed and make it an appointive position and not a running mate uh, where he can be fired or hired at uh, the whims of the president uh, simply to accommodate our bad behavior. Do you think this is the best way to approach uh, any possible uh, constitutional amendment? Um, if you are to ask me uh, the approach we would do for such a case for the deputy president, whether they would continue being um, uh, an elective, a running mate or an appointive position, I would narrow down to even going back to county governments where uh, sometimes the deputy governor <coughs> take into the impeachment of the governor for them to go up the ladder. So I think if it comes to such amendments, we should not take them to appointive positions. Instead, we should make it independent elective positions. Just like a governor runs, so should a deputy governor run. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, the mandate and the power belongs to the people. And sometimes when you just come in simply because somebody else was fronted, because in most cases we've seen people who have been deputy governors simply because the deputy gov uh, the governor was liked, but the other person was not really the, the ideal person to be the deputy governor. And sometimes superiority comes in between them and things go away, just like we, we are seeing in the case of the president and the deputy president. And uh, when it comes to constitution amendments, they are way more... Uh, disturbing issues with the Kenyan people that need to be amended rather than political part of it. Mm -hmm. In that constitution there are so many things we can amend to make better the lives of Kenyans before we even talk of political um, amendments because at the end of the day we need to ask ourselves why are we always considering the politician not uh, the common one? Why are we always considering increasing the term of politicians or making uh, their, 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 their time in office more freedom, more of everything that they want to get, privileges and everything, increasing their budgets, uh, giving them luxury at the expense of common wananchi. Mm -hmm. I wish we would look into constitutional amendments that can work for the Kenyan people. How can we increase the freedom of expression for the Kenyan taxpayer? How can we increase uh, safeguarding their democracy? How can we increase that uh, tomorrow if a Kenyan taxpayer goes on the road, they will not be shot dead by a police uh, officer? How are we going to end abductions? How are we going to, uh, to ensure that in future, the Kenyan taxpayer in terms of the constitution, but again, I would, it would beg the question, if already we have a constitution that uh, guides us on how to go through about these issues, but we still don't follow it, will amending it going to help the Kenyan taxpayer? Again, at the question of the expense of the politician. So it's a discussion that we need to have as Kenyans. But then again, I want to ask the Gen Z, please don't get tired of agitating. Please don't get tired of raising your concerns. Along the way, for the last three, four months, any time I sit in any political meeting or in any strategy meeting, they are saying, we cannot do this because the Gen Z, if they see this, they're going to say this and they're going to raise this. So at the end of the day, it's a conversation everybody's coming into reality into. Okay. Uh, Hans, and talking about Gen Z, uh, there's a lot that uh, can be said, but the Gen Zs are not considering um, any possibility of a change in a constitution 14 years later. But if we look at the politicians, they're very keen and they are very clear about what they want. And I look at, uh, at, at this bill at a glance, this is very political amendments. Uh, is proposing to change the terms of the president and other elected leaders, to extend the terms of uh, elected leaders, uh, creation of the prime minister's office, has included it, where the Prime Minister is appointed from the largest parliament, uh, party in Parliament. It seeks to enhance Senate powers, allowing it to vet state officers, proposing changes to the impeachment process of governors and other constitutional processes. Um, okay, at least there's one. Calls for increase of counties revenue share from 15 to 40 percent. <laughs> um, but most of these pro uh, proposals are purely politics. It's uh, goodies for politicians. There are other issues, and Jerry says, that probably need uh, our attention in as far as amending the constitution. But Kenyans are not looking that way. If we let this, uh, any possible amendment be left only to the politicians, we uh, could uh, end up with something totally different. Good morning, Fred. Good morning. I wouldn't want us to imagine that there are gay ideas. It's politicians' ideas or Kenyan ideas. This is a personal idea. And therefore, we wouldn't want to imagine that all politicians have such kind of thinking. We want to benefit directly from that. Yeah, but we want to see how they'll respond. After they respond, now we charge them. If, the, if there are those who will say, let's go for it. But then if you seek, uh, if, if I try just to give my point of thinking about the time limit, 
I would, also, I would think five years is small. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you, seven years is a good time to deliver. If you, if you, apart from seeing the benefit that politicians get from being a member of parliament for seven years, see the, the, how government projects can be delivered. Five years, that's why most of the uh, president terms, the first term, there's less to be done. In the second term, there's a lot to be delivered. Because within the first uh, five years, actually, it's difficult to deliver on what on government projects. Uh, let me why, tell you. Why, why is it difficult? In the US, they do four <laughs> years uh, uh, for president. Uh, is, is it just because <coughs> of our bad manners that we see five years as two? Let me answer that one. Uh -huh. In the US, why they do four years is because, you know, Kenya is a developing country. More of, our, uh, more of our performance in government is all about, is about infrastructure. You know, US is a developed country. It's more of about service providing. Mm -hmm. So on service providing, four years is just a good time. But on development, you need more. You, like if you begin today, want to do certain kind of uh, procurement processes to do infrastructure, five years is a small time. If you begin about drawing, like if you want to do a road today, if you begin it by only doing drawings by the engineers, it can even take six months to one year. Then you go to procurement processes. Then maybe if there's a code injunction for it, then they fight, then they win, then they begin doing it. So it's difficult. But then if you, if you, you can even compare it with Rwanda. If you give it time and you get a good leader, we'll, we are going to deliver. Again on this, what Terarga has tried to place in, the one that seeks to give Senate powers, I think it makes sense because we are not seeing Senate being given the real kind of attention. National Assembly had seemed to, be, like now we've been complaining about uh, rubber stabbings of the parliament and so on. We need to have a strong Senate. That in case we have weak members in the National Assembly, at least the country can be saved with the Senate. Mm -hmm. Lastly is uh, increase of allocation from 15 to 40 percent. I think it's a, it's a good idea. But then uh, we, we wait to see on how these people are going to respond. My thinking is it's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. It's just an idea of Gerard and seeing maybe it can be adopted. Jerry, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I wanted to mention that uh, he mentioned that um, uh, in case we have a very weak parliament, we cannot afford to have a weak parliament. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm so agitated by the fact that until now we don't have an IEBC. Tell me why I need my MP for Daragua constituency to go for seven years. If two years down the line, Outside, the roads, the, de the development, everything else is still at, at, at a standstill, you know. And yet, when there are political shenanigans going on in Mount Kenya, I see him lined up taking photos we, alongside the legs of Kimani Shongwa, mm -hmm. members of parliament who in their constituency, every road is stomached, you know. Some of our, our Mount Kenya and, and, and other parts of the country, the, the development is not the same. Some areas have roads. Others have hospitals, others don't have completely. I can tell you if you come back to uh, our constituency in Daragua, some people have not yet seen electricity in their constituencies. So they would wonder, why would somebody tell me to extend the term limit of an MP for seven years, mm -hmm. for him to give me seven years of stories, for me to be seeing him in political shenanigans, but I cannot see him in development uh, agendas. You know, we need to be very honest. The term of a limit or the term limit for MPs cannot be increased. In fact, we should create we should create a, a, a way that IEBC should never in any time in our Kenyan history have a gap, have a vacuum. So that if I want to, uh, to take out my MP tomorrow morning, I only, want to, I only need to follow the procedure because right now, all these political things that are happening is because everybody knows, even if I misbehave, even if I do everything that should not be done, it would take a whole one year before IBC is brought. We bring politics it's of IBC. It's been two years since President William Ruto took over. And many would argue it's been two wasted years. That uh, probably, yes, now he only has three years before the next election. Uh, so many of his projects are yet to see the light of day. Uh, that probably two, three years would be too short for him. Probably if he had an extension or another two years, it would make sense. I, I think, uh, you know, you know uh, the first duty of a man should be to think for themselves. And uh, as Kenyans, we must understand that politicians will always be politicians. And uh, politicians, in a way, are innately selfish. I think for you to run and to wish to be the head of others, there is some sort of evil in you <laughs> that pushes you to imagine that you should be the one leading the others. Why not being led, you know? 
we should have competitions for those who want to be led as well. <laughs> now, now, what happens is, eh, <laughs> the day the people will be as selfish as the MPs or as the elected leaders, things will start work, working out for them. Now, I, I wouldn't fight with MPs who wanted to increase their term from five to seven years. I, I would demand as a people that we ought now to make the process of recall simpler. Mm -hmm. You be there for seven years, it's okay, because we have good MPs and we have bad MPs. If you ask the people of Kiharu, they would wish that the MP stays for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? B because of the things he's doing. If you ask the people of Molo, where I come from, possibly they would say we want Kuria Kimani to continue being there because he's a good MP. But they have the opportunity to vote them uh, back again. J just process. a moment. Mm -hmm. it, it is a rigorous process that is, uses a lot of funds. So, so those who have a good MP, they wouldn't mind him staying longer. Those who have a bad MP, like my sister here, <laughs> they, they wouldn't even wish that he stays for four years. They, they would, you know, she's asking, well, is IBC going to be fully constituted for us to recall the MP? I think one of the things that the people now want to say is, okay, you have your seven years stop. Make it easier for us to recall you if you're not contented with your performance. So that we give the good MPs and good elected leaders time to serve their people without the interruptions of elections. But then we, we must also retain the power to recall you if we don't like the way you do things and recall you with ease. When you make it so difficult, because politicians are very clever, they, they will increase the term, then they will make it almost impossible for you to recall them. Firstly, they will say, no, now you have to let us at least have for three years before you, 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 you weigh whether we are doing well or bad for, for you to recall us. So the, the people too, must start uh, becoming uh, more active in politics mm -hmm. and looking out for themselves and asking, okay, you want to get it for yourselves, what is it? Because this is, th this thing of increasing the count allocations to count revenue is, is a lie. Mm -hmm. let, let me tell you in the Bulgi, there's no way you are going to take 40% of all the funds we collect and send it to county governments, mm -hmm. with all the functions that have been retained for the national government. If today, after allocating 400 billions out of 3 trillion, uh, out of a budget of almost 4 trillion, we're still borrowing, mm -hmm. then how do you tell me that we shall collect 2.5 and take almost one, of a, uh, 1 trillion to counties? Okay. The, the national government isn't going to run on 1.5. It is a lie, and we know it. Uh, what about the suggestion about the impeachment of uh, governors? And I uh, can see the bill proposes an amendment to uh, Article 181 of the Constitution providing for the procedure for removal from office of a county governor or a deputy governor so as to have a decision to impeach a governor being challenged only at the Supreme Court. Uh, hence, um, th there seems to be a recognition that, yes, the impeachment process is not that easy. Even the one that we'll be talking about uh, for the deputy president, it's not that easy. Do you think we should change and make it a bit easier that uh, if at all you are to challenge it in court, it's only at the Supreme Court level? Because now, if you start at a lower court, you still have the option of appeal at the Court of Appeal, then the Supreme Court, which could take a whole year. Mm. Uh, there's already a governor who's been impeached. The process is still in court. She's still governor months later. Fred, yeah, they are, that's what I was telling you, in Jaradagi's idea or bill, there is pros and cons. Like just the way Kimani has brought it, that their members of parliament are doing well and giving them time would be good. I think what needs to be considered, even as we discuss the governors, is that the impeachment process should be easy. So even that for the president? Even for the president, so that if there is no delivery, because we want to believe we are in a democratic country going forward, that somebody should not feel that this is my house, this is my home, I can do anything that I want to do, okay? Because if you, if you, you've heard Jerry saying that a member, of, a member of parliament should be impeached or should go home, it's because you realize that even a member of parliament is not performing. They should have, they should really be removed from the office. But if a member of parliament is performing, they should have good time to deliver. That's why I was saying five years is not enough. Running government projects, five years can never be enough to implement them. Mm -hmm. Number two is there should be a lot of public participation, even on this bill as it is going on. We want to hear what people are saying. Because if somebody today, we, we wouldn't want to imagine that this 
ideas come in from politicians and so on. We want public participation to be done and made it public, like on a national television. We want it to be to be more exposed to more angels. Then we hear what people are saying because we know there are leaders who are doing well and the leaders who are not doing well. Lastly, on the I, I really do not know what needs to be done because even if we do if we follow more money to go into the counties, counties now is more corrupt even than the national government. Governors run counties like their home. There is nothing, you, you realize even issues of payment have to be approved by governor. Mm -hmm. They have to sit with the head of finance in his house or wherever in the evening to go and see who's going to be paid and who's not going to be paid. If you're not in the line of the governor, if you, are, you haven't come to see a governor as a contractor, you're not paid. Such kind of things at times we wonder if no more money is devolved to the county, are we helping people or not? So I think uh, they should have more ways of gapping and making and expose more government functions so that we see transparency in everything. Okay. Of course, of course, the highlight there on this story is the extension of term limits for the president and other elected leaders. But the bill actually carries a lot more issues, including on the impeachment of governors, as well as the creation of the office of prime minister, which is already handled in the NADCO report. And I don't know why he's including it here. But anyway, those are just some of the headlines we're looking at. Let's take a break. When we come back, now we delve into the big matter, the impeachment or the looming impeachment of the deputy president.